We've got Jason Nixon on the line, who of course is uh, uh, the MLA who is has been raising the alarm about the lack of consultation around the um, Big Horn Country Wildlands and Parks pr- proposal. He is the MLA for Rimby Rocky Mountain House Sundry, opposition house leader for the United Conservatives, and he joins me now to chat about it. Jason, thanks so much for being with me today. Thanks for having me on, Daniel. Yeah, give me an update. So you asked for the public consultations. They said it could, they couldn't go ahead. They were too dangerous. They quickly slapped them together at the end of last week. I wasn't sure how many people would turn out. What's happened? Yeah, well, they really threw them together real fast with, you know, for the first one in Drayton Valley with like two days' notice, I believe, two and a half days' notice. But uh, so I wasn't sure what would happen either, especially given the weather. But each of these were were jam packed to the rafters, um, hundreds and hundreds of people out uh, to uh, to try to figure out what was going on. Uh, what happened is unfortunately what we've seen happen in other ones, uh, which is that the the government representatives that were there were one not prepared to answer questions. They were they were nice at the Alberta environment park employees and tried their best but you know they were they're just no answers to the, the questions that people have and so really it was our community going around in a circle trying to, to make sense of things from some boards that were put up on easels so it was pretty pretty frustrating but uh, the meetings were well attended and, and of course there, there were no problems what are the questions that people still feel are unanswered there, there's a lot of them but you know some of them are as simple as this you got uh, cattle guys who who, who graze cattle in those areas, saying, well, hey, the, the park act says I have to have my dogs off a leash, uh, but I can't work my cows with the dog on a leash, which is which is a fair point. you got the helicopter community who does a lot of both work and tourism uh, operations back in those areas of the parks act says that they wouldn't be able to land. Um, and, you know, when this first started, the government didn't even realize that. And so now there's, you know, how how's that going to work? Is, you know, they say there may be a permit process, but, of course, people want to know more details. Another real big example is there's there's people all through these areas that operate uh, leases. Uh, some of these uh, with businesses on them, whether tourism businesses, those type of things. Some of these businesses have been back in these areas for you know a century, uh, and they want to understand how this is going to impact their their lease and their operations long term, which has, of course has uh, financial implications for their operations as far as being able to get loans or those type of things. But um, you know, second, just to the long term stability of their their business. The, the list goes on and on like that. Brazil County has been asking for a long time about how this will affect the major gas project that's supposed to be taking place up there that will help with the replacing of coal that the NDP has pushed forward up there with the electricity side. And they can't get an answer from them. So mostly what happens there, Danielle, is when these type of questions are asked, uh, the government officials say, well, that, that'll be figured out later. Um, and that's just not going to work for this community, particularly when you know the fact that they've already lost all trust Uh, in the government, and in particular, the minister that's in charge of this project. Okay, so I have, every time we do a segment on this, I have people who have been engaged in a consultation process for, they, they say, literally decades. And I put back to them, I say, look, having a government say, yeah, we think we might like to do this, and doing consultation sessions is different than when they've made the decision and now say, okay, well, the consultation is over. Most people don't take every proposal seriously until there is um, an actual plan on the table. That's how I'm looking at it. Am, am, I, am I wrong on that? Has there been decades of consultation and everybody was just ignoring it and not participating and too bad for them? They should have been paying attention? Well, you're not wrong at all. And in fact, two things. One is the decades of consultation. Uh, I think that number is a little bit exaggerated for this specific plan. But second, uh, it was to do with the North Saskatchewan regional planning process, not what the NDP have brought forward uh, You know, in the last uh, few months. So the consultation process that was going on was for a different process. I mean, the NDP brought forward their own uh, plan. Second, uh, for well over a year uh, in this community, we have been asking for the government to come and consult and work with us on this because we've heard rumors about this plan, and the government has refused to. I mean, the minister famously lied about meeting with the mayor of Rocky Mountain House when she had not. I held a town hall about a year ago this week that was so packed, people were walking two or three miles on the highway to get there, uh, and the Alberta Environment Parks wouldn't even come or the minister come and talk uh, to these people. So. While the minister may have been consulting some people, she certainly was not consulting broadly in my community. Okay, so what happens now? I can, maybe you can tell me that, because um, what is the difference then between the consultation and the plan that was being developed under this North Saskatchewan regional plan? Because I, I, th- I take your point on that. I had some a representative on from the forestry sector, and they feel blindsided in the same way. But what is so different about that planning process versus what's been announced? Well, first, that, that planning process includes the community being involved to deal with some of these details it takes longer or uh, there's more of a feedback loop um this is speeding up the entire process this is only one segment of the north saskatchewan regional plan so the questions on how this will interact with the rest of the plan uh, are there 
Uh, but in addition to that, the, the regional advisory uh, council for the area did not recommend a provincial park. Uh, for the area. That, that would be one uh, difference between uh, their recommendations and what the, what the government has brought forward. But I, look, our community has no concerns with conserving this area. In fact, they have uh, been working on that for generations. They deserve a tremendous amount of credit for what has taken place in the West Country. Uh, but what, the, what they're saying is, you guys are getting all these details wrong because you're going too fast. We like, uh, we want to conserve our backyard, but will you please come work with us? And you got a minister that won't. And she's trying to present it, the NDP and Minister Phillips are trying to present it as this is a bunch of, uh, you know, or a small group of people who just want anarchy in the forest reserve. And that's just not true. When you have the town of Rocky Mountain House, Lacombe County, Mountain View County, Town of Sundry, County of Wetaskiwin, Brazoo County, Clearwater County, Pinoca County, RMA, and the list goes on and on saying, whoa, whoa, this process is not working. You need to stop, Minister, and get back to working with us. Uh, that's not a small group of people. I also understand that they've already started enacting the the proposal. They've closed down um, off highway vehicle trails. Did, did that surprise you, or was that also um, something that was already planned? Uh, that certainly was not something that was already planned, from our understanding, um, and it certainly has surprised the, the community. Nothing, nothing on this anymore surprises me because I, you know, as I said, I've been at this for a year, over a year, and I can't get them to even talk to us. So it's pretty clear that. Uh, the government of the day has no interest in actually working with the communities that have to live and work and, and ultimately implement uh, their plan. And so that, that's, that, that's the core of the problem. Uh, okay. You know, and I, I want to add one other thing to Daniel. This is not just municipalities and energy groups. There are some uh, conservation organizations within our community. Uh, you know, the Alberta Fish and Game Association, the oldest conservation uh, association in the province, who have uh, rejected this plan for the time being because they're concerned about its damage to, to habitat because of the large development that they're talking about in the area, uh, which hasn't been uh, flushed out. Okay, uh, Tim wants me to pin you down. He says, please ask him to answer this question. If the NDP pushed this through, either by ordering council or through the legislature somehow, is the U- is UCP prepared to reverse the decision and do a proper consultation? And don't let him do the typical Paul politician thing where he skirts around and doesn't really answer, just like Justin Trudeau. So he wants a pretty direct question. What are you going to do? The, the answer is, is yes. The, to be very, We are prepared to do that. Uh, to be very clear, we... We still believe in uh, conserving this area. We support that, as does all of my community. But we we don't support this ram through bizarre process. So this is just too important to get wrong. And um, you know, so we we announced after the Sunday meeting, which was the last one, that if the NDP ch- choose to force this through, that the United Conservative government would reverse and, and go back to the North Saskatchewan regional plan. Okay, so Feb fifteenth, they're still consulting too. What happens after that? Well, that's that's up to the government. I mean, they they could do an order in council and and force this through. I think lots of people suspect they will. Uh, I would strongly urge them not to. This, you know, again, the, the premier's office has been sending out emails to people on this saying, no, don't worry, it's going to take several more years of consultation to be able to get all the rules figured out. Well, if that's the case, then we're right. So there's no need to rush this through before an election. Let's slow it down. Let's work with the community and let's let's do something. Uh, you know, do do the right thing in this area. Uh, and make it great for future generations to come. All right, Jason Nixon, Tim, thanks you for your direct answer to a direct question. We appreciate your work on this. You bet. Take care, Daniel. Yeah, that's Jason Nixon, MLA for Rimby Rocky Mountain House, sundry opposition house leader for the United Conservatives in the legislature. It's a good point. Um, if you're going to be consulting anyway, then there's no need to establish it as a fact and then do two or three years of consultation after the fact. Do the two or three years of consultation, get everybody to buy in, and then affirm it after all that heavy lifting has been done. I still don't understand what the great rush is on this. But if it does pass, uh, they say they'll reverse it and go back to the drawing board.